At the start of the movie, we are introduced to a girl named Ellie Arroway, who tragically lost her mother at a young age and harbors dreams of initiating contact with extraterrestrial civilizations through radio communication. As years pass, Ellie, who also lost her father when she was just nine, dedicates her life to science and becomes involved in SETI, the project aimed at searching for extraterrestrial civilizations and potentially establishing contact with them. She ventures to the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico, accompanied by her assistant Kent Clark, to scan the radio spectrum for signals from space. However, her efforts are met with skepticism, and her work fails to garner serious attention. Dr. Arroway here will be spending her precious telescope time listening for, um, little green men. One day at a local cafe, she encounters a writer named Palmer Joss, who inquires about Ellie's work at Arecibo. She explains her quest for extraterrestrial intelligence, leaving Palmer impressed by her ambition. He mentions his upcoming interview with the president's science advisor, David Drumlin, and extends an invitation to dinner, which Ellie politely declines. Later, at an event, Ellie discovers that officials led by Drumlin plan to cut funding for scientific research due to perceived lack of practical benefits. Eager to challenge this decision, Ellie finds support from Palmer, who argues that the pursuit of truth, intrinsic to science, should not be forsaken. Drumlin is taken aback by Palmer's unexpected advocacy, given his critical stance on technical sciences. Ellie is surprised to learn that Palmer is a priest and, intrigued, asks about his background. Palmer reveals his theological education and humanitarian work since leaving the seminary. Despite their differing perspectives, Ellie and Palmer quickly develop romantic feelings for each other. As they leave the event, they gaze at the celestial wonders, sharing a tender kiss under the night sky. Spending the night together, Ellie and Palmer open up about their pasts, discussing her childhood fascination with astronomy and his faith in God. Ellie hurriedly prepares for work the next morning, promising to call Palmer later. Walking outside, Ellie reflects on the day she lost her father due to her forgetfulness in bringing his medication on time. The priest offers consolation, attributing the tragedy to God's will, but Ellie rebukes, suggesting a practical solution could have prevented it. On the same day, Ellie discovers from Kent that their program faces closure due to perceived lack of progress. Frustrated, she confronts Drumlin, who urges her to redirect her efforts towards more ostensibly beneficial pursuits. I don't consider what could potentially be the most important discovery of the human race nonsense, okay? Upon arriving home, she discovers a note containing Palmer's phone number but opts against reaching out to him. Instead, she contacts Kent, and together they decide to pursue alternative funding avenues for their research at the Very Large Array in New Mexico. Thirteen months later, addressing a new group of potential investors, Ellie faces disappointment once more as their attempts to establish contact with extraterrestrial life via the radar system appear futile. Undeterred, Ellie passionately reminds the investors that many aspects of human progress, like airplanes and nuclear energy, were once deemed fantastical. She implores them to make the right choice. Initially disinterested, the investors suddenly receive a call, and the enigmatic S.R. Haddon, likely having observed Ellie's endeavors, agrees to provide the necessary funds. Four years have passed. Despite Ellie's diligent efforts at the very large array, they yield no breakthroughs. Despite Haddon's willingness to continue funding for another two years, Drumlin seeks to halt the use of government-owned radars, giving them a mere three months to conclude their research. Meanwhile, Palmer Joss has ascended to a position as a consultant and advisor to the White House. His latest book questions whether scientific and technological advancements have truly improved the world. However, Ellie remains resolute and one day, she detects an unusual signal. Excitedly, Ellie immediately notifies her team about the signal, prompting the scientists to initiate an investigation. It doesn't take long for them to determine that the signal emanates from the star Vega, situated 26 light years away from Earth, and that it comprises a sequence of prime numbers. Despite their efforts, the team struggles to decipher the significance of this enigmatic signal. Ultimately, they opt to disclose their discovery to the public. The following day, a throng of officials and journalists descends upon the very large array, eager to comprehend the significance of the revelation. Among them are Drumlin, intent on appropriating credit for Ellie's breakthrough, and Michael Kitts, the president's national security advisor, who endeavors to assert control over the situation. Puzzled by why an advanced extraterrestrial civilization would employ primitive mathematics instead of a more sophisticated form of communication like English. Mathematics is the only truly universal language center. Simultaneously, another signal arrives from Vega, revealing encrypted audio and video messages. Ellie spearheads the decoding effort, unveiling Adolf Hitler's infamous speech from the 1936 Summer Olympics in Berlin within the transmissions. The revelation rattles officials, prompting immediate reporting to the president. Despite Ellie's reassurances that the message poses no direct threat, the speech being the first television signal transmitted into space and subsequently returning to Earth after decades, the gravity of the situation demands attention. As the president addresses the nation 
information regarding this unprecedented find. The team captures additional signals from Vega. Contrary to expectations, Hitler's speech, transmitted at 25 frames per second, is eclipsed by the discovery of video signals at 50 frames per second. Further analysis reveals the purported audio track to be an extensive trove of encrypted text, spanning over 63,000 pages. The implications of this new information remain elusive, prompting Drumlin to enlist top cryptographers for assistance. However, the process of deciphering the alien messages could stretch out over many years. News of the signals from Vega ignites a global frenzy. Neo-Nazi factions gain traction, while clashes erupt between scientific and theological communities. Additionally, thousands of believers and atheists converge upon the New Mexican desert, drawn to the epicenter of this extraordinary phenomenon. Are these the kind of people that you want talking to your God for you? Bewildered by the spectacle of various groups and sects, Ellie returns to her relentless efforts to decipher the enigmatic alien message, which continues to elude her. Two weeks after receiving the cryptic data, Ellie is surprised to receive an email from an anonymous sender offering assistance in decrypting the message. Under the cloak of darkness, a mysterious aircraft lands at the very large array, beckoning Ellie inside. Here, she finally encounters S.R. Haddon, the enigmatic benefactor behind her research. Haddon reveals his precarious state, plagued by enemies worldwide and with little time left to live. However, before his departure, he aims to extend a parting act of goodwill to humanity. Ellie realizes that Haddon possesses the key to deciphering the cipher. Haddon unveils that the intellect of the alien civilization surpasses that of humans, operating across diverse levels and dimensions with unparalleled efficiency. The data, he explains, must be amalgamated into three-dimensional pages, each harboring a component of the key, granting access to a comprehensive scientific lexicon. As scientists continue unraveling the messages, they stumble upon blueprints depicting an enigmatic machine of unknown purpose. Speculation abounds, yet the true nature of this device remains unknown. Could be a Trojan horse, we build it not for the entire Vegan army. Politicians are hesitant to initiate construction of the enigmatic machine due to potential risks to humanity. However, Ellie challenges their apprehensions, arguing that assuming malevolent intentions from extraterrestrial beings is unfounded. Additionally, officials express concerns about potential backlash from religious communities, given the uncertainty surrounding the morality of aliens and its impact on faith. During discussions among members of Palmer's commission, Ellie notices Joss, who pledges to craft a viewpoint that balances the interests of science enthusiasts and religious followers. At a formal evening reception attended by politicians and scientists, Ellie and Palmer revisit their conversation, delving into theological matters. Despite their differing viewpoints, they discover common ground. The event is abruptly interrupted by an urgent message from Codebreakers, revealing detailed instructions for constructing a device intended to transport an individual to Vega. Simultaneously, the president announces approval for the machine's construction during a meeting, with the hefty cost of approximately $300 billion to be shared among nations. Ellie emerges as a leading contender among a group of candidates vying for the opportunity, given her pivotal discovery. However, the final decision rests with the commission, which includes Palmer. Although Ellie anticipates Palmer's support, he reveals that Drumlin, another candidate, poses a significant challenge. As Ellie and nine other candidates actively engage in the competition, giving numerous interviews to persuade the public of their suitability for first contact with extraterrestrial life, influential nations continue investing in the costly construction project. Meanwhile, Palmer attempts to dissuade Ellie from participating in the competition and embarking on the journey to Vega. He highlights the temporal disparity, emphasizing that while she may spend four years traveling at light speed, nearly five decades would pass on Earth, separating her from loved ones indefinitely. Nevertheless, Ellie remains resolute, willing to sacrifice everything, including her life, to realize her lifelong dream and the groundbreaking discovery that could change the world. You're an incredibly brave woman, Ellie. Incredibly nuts. Understanding the significance of the mission to Ellie, Palmer ceases his attempts to dissuade her, leading to a moment where they share a kiss. A few days later, Ellie faces an interview with the commission, broadcasted globally. She expresses her primary curiosity about how the inhabitants of Vega navigated technological evolution without self-destruction. Unexpectedly, Palmer poses a provocative question to Ellie about her beliefs regarding God. She responds evasively, leaning on empirical evidence and stating the absence of definitive proof for God's existence. However, the commission members find her response inadequate, contending that an atheist cannot adequately represent the vast majority of believers on Earth. Consequently, Ellie fails the interview, and the decision is made to send Drumlin into space, his professed religiousness convincing the commission. Later that evening, Palmer visits Ellie, who is disheartened by the outcome. 
He confesses that his conscience compelled him not to support a non-believer. Ellie counters, insisting she spoke truthfully, contrasting Drumlin's pandering to expectations. After much anticipation, the space machine's construction is finally completed, drawing thousands to witness its inaugural tests. Ellie, alongside numerous specialists, monitors the launch from the control center. Meanwhile, a reporter elucidates the alien device's operational principles, detailing how the passenger compartment interfaces with the core before the surrounding rings initiate rotation. Yet, the outcome remains uncertain. The rings might propel the compartment at light speed or open a portal to another dimension. As preparations for launch reach their climax, Ellie spots among the workers a leader of a religious sect known for opposing scientific advancements. Realizing the imminent danger, Ellie races to warn Drumlin and others, only to discover the sect member carrying a substantial amount of explosives. Despite their efforts, they are unable to prevent the fanatic from detonating the explosives, obliterating the entire space installation, sacrificing himself in the process. In the aftermath of the tragic terrorist attack, Drumlin and several of his team members haven't survived. Grieving and disheartened, Ellie returns home only to stumble upon a message in Russian. Subsequently, she receives contact from two Russian cosmonauts, accompanied by S.R. Haddon. Haddon discloses his battle with cancer and his residence aboard the Mir space station, where reduced oxygen levels and weightlessness halt the progression of the disease. Revealing an identical space machine, Haddon explains its clandestine construction in Japan under contract from the US government. With Ellie now the sole American candidate, he extends an offer for her to embark on the journey to Vega. Inspired by the opportunity, Ellie ventures to Japan, where a collaborative team of American and Japanese scientists prepares her for the mission. Among the preparations, she is provided with a capsule of poison as a precaution, though Ellie's resolve assures she'll never resort to it willingly. Unexpectedly, Palmer arrives and confesses that his vote against her candidacy stemmed not solely from her atheism but also from his fear of losing her. Meanwhile, news of the second installation and Ellie's impending voyage to Vega spreads globally, though access to the departure site remains restricted. As Ellie meticulously checks the compartment systems and readies for departure, a strange vibration permeates the cabin. Despite reassurances from the team, Ellie detects an unusual glow below and attempts to capture it on camera before communication with the control center succumbs to interference. Undeterred, Ellie persists, confirming her readiness as the rings accelerate to maximum speed. With a 10-second countdown initiated, the compartment disengages from the rings in a blinding flash. Hurtling through a crimson void, Ellie discerns she's traversing through a mysterious tunnel, communicating her observations until contact is lost. Emerging from the tunnel, Ellie glimpses the radiance of Vega, realizing she's breached another dimension via wormholes. Continuing through the new passage, she discerns signs of civilization on Vega amid the awe-inspiring cosmic expanse. In a subsequent tunnel, Ellie's seat vibrates intensely, prompting her to unstrap and float weightlessly. Suddenly, her seat ascends, plunging everything into darkness. Switching on her flashlight, Ellie beholds an indescribable cosmic panorama before her, a sight beyond words. Beautiful. So beautiful. Suddenly, Ellie finds herself on an extraordinary beach reminiscent of one from her childhood memories. Stars twinkle directly above her, and she's surrounded by a mysterious, translucent substance. Before long, she spots a semi-transparent figure that gradually takes on the form of her father. Overcome with emotion, Ellie rushes into his arms, only to second-guess herself, dismissing him as a mere hallucination. She suspects that while unconscious, the aliens manage to infiltrate her thoughts and memories. Confirming her suspicions, the alien explains that this connection will facilitate her engagement in first contact with them. Eagerly, Ellie begins to pose questions, starting with who constructed the wormholes. The alien admits ignorance, revealing that these cosmic phenomena predate the existence of the Vega civilization. Ellie inquires about encounters with representatives from other civilizations, to which the alien responds that they've encountered only a handful of beings from other planets. Taking Ellie's hand, the alien muses on humanity's complexity, remarking on its amalgamation of splendid dreams and harrowing nightmares. It emphasizes the necessity for human unity and understanding, assuring Ellie that humanity is not alone in the vast expanse of the universe. With a gentle touch reminiscent of her father's, the alien signals it's time for Ellie to return home, labeling their encounter as merely the beginning of a series of future contacts. It implores her to exercise patience and bestows a kiss upon her as her father would have done it, leaving Ellie utterly bewildered and filled with questions. Gazing up at the radiant stars, Ellie begins to lose consciousness. Suddenly, her cabin plunges into water, and communication with the control center is restored. As Ellie regains her senses, the team inquiries about her well-being. Confused and disoriented, Ellie asks about the date on Earth and the duration of her absence. However, the bewildered staff delivers disappointing news. The IPV dropped straight through the machine. You didn't go anywhere. 
Ellie, skeptical of their claims, endeavors to validate her stance through video recordings. However, these recordings only reveal interference. In contrast, 43 Earth cameras captured the cabin's rapid descent into the water, a process that lasted mere seconds. Concurrently, the government initiates an active investigation into the peculiar event. They convene a new commission and facilitate debates between Ellie and Kitts. Ellie remains steadfast in her assertion contending that the installation opened a space-time corridor, enabling her to traverse vast distances in the universe in a fraction of Earth's time, in accordance with the theory of relativity. Kitts, however, maintains that Ellie's account is mere hallucination, given her inability to substantiate the existence of the Vega civilization. He posits that the signal from Vega was likely fabricated by S.R. Haddon, who had both the means and motive for such deception. Though incredulous, Ellie cannot discount the possibility. Kitts argues that Haddon, a wealthy and enigmatic figure, might have orchestrated the hoax to test new technologies, extort funds from governments, or galvanize global unity. Further complicating matters, it is revealed that Haddon has passed away, leaving no opportunity to confirm or refute Kitts's claims. Kitts then invokes Occam's razor, suggesting that a simpler explanation, involving Haddon, is more plausible than Ellie's elaborate narrative. Acknowledging the skepticism, Ellie concedes that, were she in their position, she might harbor doubts as well. Yet, she remains resolute in her belief that her journey to Vega was real. I can't prove it, I can't even explain it. But everything that I know as a human being, everything that I am tells me that it was real. Despite skepticism from officials, Palmer and thousands of supporters take to the streets in solidarity with Ellie. When questioned by a journalist about his stance on Ellie's narrative, Palmer, a religious individual with a differing perspective, emphasizes their shared pursuit of truth and expresses his belief in Ellie's account. As time passes, the president's advisor reaches out to Kitts, urging him to allocate a significant grant to Ellie for continued research. The advisor highlights the duration of the video recording which spans approximately 18 hours of interference, suggesting the potential validity of Ellie's claims. 18 months later, Ellie persists in her research endeavors, captivating audiences and inspiring children with tales of the universe's vastness. Simultaneously, the government invests in the construction of 45 new radars, intensifying efforts to establish contact with extraterrestrial civilizations. Do you think such journeys across the universe will ever become possible? And will humans be able to establish contact with extraterrestrial beings? Share your thoughts in the comments below, hit the like button, and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next videos.